Oh, yes, my name is Tim Myers. I work here at Centre de Ressaca Mathematica. I do very applied mathematics. It's within a field called industrial mathematics and I've travelled around the world doing it. So I've lived in every continent apart from Antarctica doing this kind of mathematics. As you've seen from my desk, <laughs> lots of things. I, I work in many areas. I work in nanotechnology. I work a lot in phase change, cambio de fase, which easy example is a piece of ice melting, so turning to water. I'm, I'm obviously going the opposite way. I've worked with blood pressure monitoring, microwave defrosting. I change, I get bored quickly. So I, I work, I just, I look in applied problems where mathematics I can, can explain, explain parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I take, take the example of the football, the football team played at high altitude and the ball moves differently through the air as it does at sea level and football teams have a choice of balls, they're given say three balls by the sponsors and they can choose and basically the answer there was I, I said to, to choose a smooth ball because it would behave very differently to the ball when it was kicked near the sea and the, a team coming from sea level wouldn't understand how the ball moved in the air, so they would kick it in the wrong direction. I've worked for aircraft companies. Now, aircraft in cold weather, I've just flown to the Netherlands with my daughter, and she could see ice outside. Now, ice grows on the outside of aircraft, and in fact, you have to heat aircraft a lot to stop the ice growing, because the ice will make the aircraft crash. And so, what I worked on was finding out how, where the ice appeared, how big it would be, and then what you needed to do to get rid of it. Because, as I say, all aircraft are heated, but you don't want to heat them too much. That uses all your power. So you want to heat them in the crucial areas. So I, I would tell an eight-year-old about how ice grows on aircraft, but you can heat the aircraft to stop the ice growing to make it oh, safe. Okay. I, well, like I say, I, I, I build up models using equations, then a lot of the work I do is approximating things because models can be very complicated. You can put everything in, but not everything's important. If I'm, if I'm driving a car along the road, what's important really? The wheels are on the ground, I've got the wind blowing on the car, but maybe a small fly hitting the car doesn't stop your car. Now, I can put everything into a model of the car's motion and I can put flies hitting the car in and I can end up with complicated equations. But I, I look and I see what's important, what's making things happen, and I try and concentrate on the important things and find a simpler system. And so I look at approximate solutions, but approximate solutions that will get me very close to the correct answer. And that's really how I use mathematics. I don't think I had a moment. I think when I, when I was younger, I found mathematics easy, and I guess I was slightly lazy. I took the, the option that I found easiest, but maybe I found it easy because I found it more interesting. And then I started to enjoy the way it joined with the real world, learning mechanics and so on, applying mathematics to mechanics, and then in the physics lessons as well, mathematics appeared. And, and then I went to do a degree, and I, I went along an applied route. I just enjoyed it more and more the way, as I learned more about mathematics, I found more that I could do with it. At school, quite often, you don't see the relation to the real world. You don't understand that mathematics joins all the sciences together. And it took me a long time, I think about the third year in the university that I was at, the teacher solved something and said, and that's how a TV aerial works. And I thought, wow, I've waited this long for someone to show me that mathematics can teach me about television. And then when I went to my PhD, I just got more and more into applying mathematics to real problems and so on. So after saying I didn't know the time when I decided to do mathematics, I guess it's when I saw that mathematics could really be applied to something. That's difficult question for me it's I think it's different for everybody in sort of in the Catalan region I think in Spain in general mathematics is 
seen as quite a pure subject, but for me, I see it as a very applied subject. That's, that's what I love doing. I love applying mathematics, and that's what I'm trying to bring to the local community. In fact, all the researchers at my centre are very applied mathematicians. So for me, what is mathematics? It's, it's, a, way, it's a way to learn about the world. It's a way to understand how things work. Mm -hmm.